Application, Quadratic Demand and Supply Analysis. In the last tutorial, we sketched quadratic inverse demand and supply functions by following a series of steps. Now, let's practice solving for the market equilibrium when we're giving two demand equations, two unknowns that are quadratic in nature. Recall that a market equilibrium is a situation in which the price in the market is such that quantity demanded equals quantity supplied. And an equilibrium is going to have two parts. The first is the equilibrium price, P star. It's the price at which the market equilibrium takes place. And the equilibrium quantity, Q star. And it's the quantity exchange at the equilibrium price. In the graph below, market equilibrium occurs at the intersection of supply and demand. So our goal is to use math to try to figure out what P star and Q star are. Now quadratic equations can be a little bit more complicated. When solving for the equilibrium, you may get something in the following form. AX squared plus BX is equal to C, where X is quantity or the price or wh whichever variable you're trying to solve for first. But you can rearrange it to look like this, AX squared plus BX minus C equals zero. These two equations are identical to one another. And that equation should look familiar, that AX squared plus BX minus C. Remember, we can use the quadratic formula to solve equations like this. When finding the horizontal intercept of a quadratic function, we set Y equal to zero, which yields AX squared plus BX minus C equals zero. And then we use that quadratic formula to find the values of x that solve or satisfy ax squared plus bx minus c equals zero. It's no different here. Let's go through an example. Okay, so I've got my supply equation and I've got my demand equation. I'm asked to solve for the market equilibrium. So I'm going to use the substitution method. I'm going to substitute this guy. So this is, there we go. I'm going to substitute this guy Oops. into here. So what do we get? We get 2 squared plus 10q plus 10 is equal to negative q squared minus 5 minus 5q plus 52. So I'm going to go ahead and solve this like you normally would. Uh, not knowing what to do when it's a quadratic equation. So normally what you do is you try to get Q on one side and everything else on the other. So let's go ahead and do that. Let me add Q squared to each side and also add 5Q to each side. And again, if I'm trying to get Q by itself, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to subtract 10 from each side. So I've done three steps in one um, to save space. So what I get here is 3Q squared plus 15q is equal to 42. So at this point, you may think, I've come to a standstill, there's no solution. But there definitely is a solution. Remember, this is just in the form, right now it's in the form of ax squared plus bx is equal to c. But rearrange it. Rearrange it to solve for ax squared plus bx minus c equals zero. These two equations are exactly the same. And then we can use a quadratic formula to solve for the x's. So I've got my 3q squared plus 15q minus 42 equals zero. So this is the equation I'm going to use. It's in that ax squared plus bx plus c form, and let me actually write that out. So this is in the ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero form. So I can say that a is equal to 3, b is equal to 15, and c is equal to negative 42. So let's use that quadratic formula to solve for this. Remember, let's write this over here quadratic formula tells us that when we have an equation of this form, ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero, the solution or solutions for x, if one exists, is equal to negative b plus or minus the square root 
of b squared minus 4 oops, ac all divided by 2a. So we have our values and we can just plug them in. So let's go ahead and do that. So I've got x is equal to negative 15 plus or minus the square root of b squared, which is going to be 15 squared, which is 225, and then minus 4ac. So let me write this one out. This actually becomes minus a negative 504. So 4 times a is 12 times negative 42 is negative 504. And then we're going to divide by 2a, which just comes out to 6. And I can simplify this even further. This becomes negative 15 plus or minus the square root of, let's see, 729. I had that written down. Divided by 6. So this is a positive number. I know that I should get two solutions, two mathematical solutions. So let me actually just go like, whoop, go like, who's that? I'm going to get my first solution is going to be negative 15 plus or minus the square root of 729 is 27. Right? Divided by 6. So I'm going to get negative 15 plus 27 over 6 and my second solution will be negative 15 minus 27 over 6. And so for my first mathematical solution I actually end up getting 2 for q star and this one turns out to be negative 7. And negative 7 is a mathematical solution, it's just not an economic solution. Um, so we're not going to count this one. So let's write this out. Not an economic solution because we can't have negative quantities. So we're not concerned with it. Okay, great. So we have that our equilibrium quantity is Q. And I'll write over here now to find P star. We're just going to plug that into either demand or supply equation. So we get 2 times 2 squared plus 10 times 2 plus 10 gives us 38. Or we could have done it. We could have plugged this in into the demand equation, get negative 2 squared minus 5 times 2 plus 52, and we get 38 again. So there we go. We've just used a quadratic formula. There we go. We've just used a quadratic formula to solve for a market equilibrium. Equilibrium here is going to occur at this is going to be the 2. It's supposed to be a straight line. That's okay if it's not. And then at just about there, P star is equal to 38. This Q star is 2.